Good evening and welcome to CB8 Speaks. My name is Dave Rosenstein. I'm a member of Community Board 8 and your host for this evening's show. Community Board 8 is a city agency. It covers the Upper East Side. It's from 59th and 96th Street as well as Roosevelt Island. Tonight we're going to visit with some of our new Community Board members. Uh, we're all public officials who serve without pay for two-year terms appointed by the Borough President. Our first guest tonight is Sarah Solomon. As a result of legislation passed two years ago in Albany, up to two teenagers between 16 and 17 can serve on each of the community boards. There's 12 boards in Manhattan, 50, I think, in the city. Sarah is a junior at the Dalton School. She's one of two teens serving on Community Board 8. She's a junior class representative to the school's Board of Trustees, heads Dalton's Alumni Club, and last summer was an intern for Senator Charles Schumer. Sarah, welcome. Thank uh, you so much. Based on that summary, which leaves out so much just to save time, uh, you're pretty comfortable working with folks older than yourself. What's been your experience on the community board? Uh, do you feel listened to? I mean, so far it's been a really positive experience. Um, everyone has been very respectful of my opinions and I've felt very comfortable sharing them, especially on the smaller committee level. I feel like I've had a lot more input there um, and people have been really nice about helping me with the learning curve in terms of procedure of the meetings and also just really trying to help inform my decision making and votes. Um, so everyone's been really welcoming of me so far and I've felt completely comfortable. That's great. Are there issues where you think a young adult's perspective uh, can really make a difference is important uh, that the board here? Definitely. I think, I mean in my opinion, a diverse um, group of people always is important in terms of making decisions and just making sure that you have every perspective, I guess, represented. Um, especially, I mean, I think we'll probably talk about this later, but I serve on the Youth Education and Libraries Committee, so in that committee, definitely the viewpoints of a young person are very important given education. Um, a lot of times in the meetings, I'm able to kind of provide the student's perspective and understand really more about what the needs of the students are in those situations. Um, so I think also something that's really important in terms of what the community boards have done by allowing teenagers to serve is that they're bridging the gap a little bit more between students and also the government, um, which just in terms of the future, um, I think is a very valuable thing because it gets people involved at a young age, which will hopefully continue. We've got about 220,000 residents, at least according to one of the surveys that I looked up on, uh, online this week. 18% approximately are under 18. Right. So you represent a significant yeah. chunk of the population of, of Board 8. Let's talk a little more about the committees. Much, much of the work that gets done is done at the committee level. And you mentioned one that you're on. What, what else? My other committee that I'm um, a member of is the Technology Committee. There have been a lot of new ideas floating around in terms of technology and where we're kind of headed um, with the community board. So recently we've been working on increasing viewership on our existing Twitter and Facebook pages. Also thinking about launching an Instagram because that might draw more attraction. We're redoing the website, which is important step. I think also just something that a young person can add is the understanding of how important social media is and since it's definitely a part of my daily life I think I really understand how you can communicate things such as promoting a city event or local news or some policy that we're trying to campaign for and using social media as a platform for that is really important so we've been trying to expand that presence and also just the fact that not that many people know about what a community board is. That's for sure. More awareness about what that is and how it can be a resource for the people in the community. And also there's a lot of people on our board and I'm one of them. Right. I sort of vaguely know that Instagram has something to do with pictures. Right. But that's all I know about it. Yeah. I, I don't Twitter. And it's because important. Because I'm afraid to do the wrong thing and yes. end up with uh, uh, reaching people I hadn't intended to reach. Right, absolutely. There's a lot of the board members um, don't use these tools. Don't right. Know how? And so we're working on trying to figure out how we can get board members more involved also. How'd you learn about the opportunity to serve on the community board? Actually, my uncle was a member of community board too really? for a while, and he really enjoyed his experience. And I can't remember how long ago exactly, but I would say three or four years ago, he talked to me about his experience on the community board and I was interested in public service and government 
and there was no real place for me to be a part of a, a larger community where I could express and explore those interests. So it was in the back of my mind that 16 year olds could join the board. And when I turned 16, I decided to apply for a position so, um, or to be, become a member of the board. So I filled out the application and I went to an interview with council member um, Dan Gorodnik at his office. We talked about a lot of the issues that are going on, that were going on and being debated in city council, which was a really unique experience. And then I went to a group interview at the Manhattan Borough President's office. Half of the, the board members are nominated by a city council person. The right. other half are direct appointments from the borough president. Yeah. Ultimately, we're all appointed by the borough president, but right. half with the recommendation of uh, yeah. uh, a council member. In, in textbooks in high school, yeah. um, major events are covered in a handful of pages. Uh, World War II might be a whole chapter. And unfortunately, it's usually at the end of the year, so nobody even <laughs> pays, pays any attention to, to recently current events. But here you are in a government agency that exemplifies how slow change takes place. People come to us with minor issues like a, a health club yeah. that's going to be opening. And right. we get a ream of paper and lawyers and, and architects. Um, is it, um, was it disappointing to find out the government is, is, moves like a glacier or did you, did you expect this? I think the kind of learning about the workings of the government through the community board has been very interesting for me. It's definitely a, not a quick process in terms of getting things done, but I think something that's been especially um, surprising to me, but also um, something that I'm very happy about is the amount of the voice of the people in the community and the impact that they can have by just discussing issues that are presented to them. So I think part of the idea that the process is so long, yes, it is so long, but at the same time, I think in a democratic society where we're really focusing on different people's opinions, I think it's a really important part of the process to be able to foster um, an environment where all of the different community members are able to come together and debate and discuss what and how these different things, proposed things, will affect them. So I, don't, I think it's been an encouraging experience to understand the process of uh, democracy at such a local level and being able to hear all of the different people come in and discuss how important various things are to them and why or why not they're opposed or in favor of mm -hmm. them, um, just engaging people. So it is a slow process, but I think it's important that it is that way. Let's talk a, a minute about you and where you're going. Uh, I know you tragically lost your dad, uh, highly respected journalist John D. Solomon, to leukemia six years ago. And um, in your resume, there's a lot uh, of journalism and, and uh, writing and photography and I was just wondering if, if that's a career area you're thinking about. Definitely is. Um, I'm very interested in public service and government and journalism. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to play out yet, but I'm definitely looking into um, ways to pursue that in college. Our producer, uh, my co-chair on this committee, uh, uh, Will Sanchez, reminded me that uh, your dad was a passionate advocate of emergency preparedness and a fellow volunteer with Will on the CERT team, the Eastside's Community Emergency Response Team. Public service seems to be a strong force in, in your in your life and in your family. Absolutely. A fellowship was set up by the city's emergency response yeah. folks, and it's the first student fellowship with the city devoted specifically to emergency management. It makes it possible for graduate students to work as interns and get paid for it for nine months in um, emergency preparedness in various agencies. It's a, it's a um, tribute to your dad, and it's a, it's a great fellowship. So uh, if we can get the link and put it up on the on the screen. Anybody's interested? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Check it out. Wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time Thank to come you. in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next new board member is uh, Michael Malamphy. Uh, Michael is co-owner of a popular Yorkville Tavern, Ryan's Daughter, on East 85th Street, uh, as well as an actor who trained 
first in his native Ireland, and as of December 9th, Michael is a newly minted U.S. citizen from County Cork. Uh, Michael, welcome to CV8 Speaks. Thanks and, very uh, much. Congratulations. Thanks, David. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Congratulations. And call me Mick, by all means. All my friends call me Mick. Okay. That's what everybody kind of knows me by, so by all means. You, well, you got it. Even though you've been a resident since uh, 2002, how does it feel to raise your hand and swear allegiance to uh, a new country? It's, uh, it's, it's quite exciting. I am, I'm looking forward to it. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time. Um, just running a business and other things kind of got in the way. But um, earlier this year, it, uh, with like the election going on, there was a lot of things kind of came up that I just felt I really wanted to you know, cement my, um, my citizenship, nail it down. And uh, it, was quite, it was quite exciting, quite exciting to do it. Uh, it was actually the morning after the last presidential election was when I actually sat down in the building downtown with hundreds of other immigrants from all over the world um, to go in and take the, uh, the interview that you have to do uh, in order to become a citizen. And um, it was a very poignant uh, moment. Um, the, the irony wasn't lost on me that after an election that you know, had uh, immigration really front and center in a lot of the debates and that uh, I was sharing a room here with people from all over the world, Muslims, Jewish people, you know, people from Asia, from Latin America, people speaking different languages, and we're all here together going into the same room to uh, become US citizens. Um, it's, it's, it's certainly a, a huge milestone for me, and um, even when I look around, everyone in New York City has had somebody in their family at one stage or another hold their hand up and take the oath and become a citizen. So uh, it's, it's really, really, it's, it's an honor to be part of the club. <laughs> it's, even though you've been here for a number of years, it's still an emotional experience. To certainly, yeah, certainly, it certainly was. I realized in preparing for this talk that uh, we have 50 members on our community board. It looks like you're the only one who represents small businesses as wow. a, a partner in a, in a tavern. Yeah. Um, small businesses are the lifeblood of our community which has been hurt by the subway construction. A lot of people have lost their businesses. The bars, the restaurants, the retailers, the, the shoemakers, the, the mom and pop stores, some people call them. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what a community is all about. And you yeah. <laughs> have, have an opportunity to represent a lot yeah, of people. A lot of people, yeah. Well, it's, it's not lost on me that, uh, I mean, every single person, pretty much every single person that walks in the door of our business, uh, they live in the neighborhood. They're part of the community as well. And um, as somebody who's stood behind a bar for many years, you do get to hear lots and lots of opinions and lots and lots of a uh, variety of opinions and uh, you don't always necessarily agree with them. And um, you are kind of, uh, I suppose, you know, you have to be a diplomat, but um, it's, important to, uh, it's important to take all those opinions on board, you know, and to respect other people's opinions. Um, I'm shocked that I'm the only person on the Community Board 8 that represents like a small business. One thing I've been um, very, uh, energized about is letting other friends of mine, other colleagues that I know who run small businesses in the neighborhood to come to the meetings, to come to the full board meeting to see what happens, to see what goes on. I think a lot of small business people in the neighborhood don't understand um, what the community board does. Uh, it, if it wasn't for me and my business, I would never have come to the community board in the first place. That's the reason I started going to the meetings. Uh, my business partner said something to me a couple of years ago. He said, you know, a lot of small businesses end up in front of various community boards when there's an issue, if there's mm. a problem. And um, it doesn't need to be like that. You know, we can become part of the solution with our neighbors, with our fellow community members. And uh, that's something that I've really learned in the last, in my first six or seven months serving on the board. It's something that I really learned that uh, it is a place where we can actually solve issues. It's a place where we can get together and explain exactly what we do as small businesses. And, um, it's been a fantastic experience so far, and it's definitely something that's very rewarding as a business owner. Many people don't realize that the requirements for service on the community board are that you live, work, or have a significant interest in the community. Mm -hmm. So somebody could live in, in another part of the city, but if they've got a business in the neighborhood, in the community, they should think about applying. Well, absolutely. It's, it's funny you just mentioned uh, shoemakers. We had a shoemaker right across the street from us for the last 50 years. And uh, we threw a nice little party from last year because we just wanted to let people know that, you know, here's mm -hmm. somebody who's been on our street, on 85th Street, for the past 50 years, mending people's shoes. And simply because, A, you know, he was about time to retire anyway. But there's a business that people just don't avail of anymore, you know. So, you know, with, with changing times comes changing economies. And 
this guy is, you know, he went out of business, but, you know, we wanted to give him a good send-off. And we actually have his old neon shoe sign hanging at the back of the bar now as a little homage to, you know, all the years he spent on our little block. <laughs> I've got to ask you about the other side of your, uh, uh, your professional life, which is the theater work. Right. Um, how'd you get started? You used a phrase, treading the boards. I've never heard boards. that one. How'd really? you get started in that? Uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty common uh, phrase back home anyway in Ireland. Um, my grandmother used to take me to the Cork Opera House when I was, I was, when I was a kid, when I was a nipper. I can't even remember. And um, she, would, uh, she used to say, you could be up there someday. You know, you could be up there. And I was always thrilled to kind of see the Christmas pantomimes that, we used, to, that used to be put on. And um, I just kind of, I just... I just took to performing. I loved it. Whenever the school plays would come around, you know, you, you do that here as well in the States. Like we have our annual school play at home in Ireland. I was always auditioning, wanting to be involved, playing the cowardly lion, you know, playing, you know, all these little characters. And um, when it came to college and when it came to, you know, choosing a career, I really couldn't see anything other than theatre. Um, I love the theatre. I think the theatre is very important. Um, I think it's a wonderful reflection, not always a wonderful reflection, but it is a reflection of who we are as people. It's a, an ancient way of communicating with each other. And I went off and studied for three or four years, went to drama school, um, just started auditioning, getting involved. And of course, at the same time, I was working in bars to supplement it. So when I eventually relocated to New York as an actor, you kind of, <laughs> I think a lot of actors have this story, they end up working in bars and you know, one thing takes off or the other thing takes off. But uh, it's, uh, it's something I've put on the back burner the last couple of years because we're really trying to grow the business quite a bit and um, we're, we're, we're heavily involved on, with the bar. Uh, being an actor is a full-time gig. You know, when you go to see a play, you sit in the audience for an hour or two. Uh, what you don't see is the hours, the hours and hours and hours that go into actually getting it up, getting up and running, rehearsals, um, getting under the skin of other characters. It's a full-time gig, you know. Yeah, what about TV? I've done a little bit of TV. Um, I still get residual checks from a, a, an episode I did of The Good Wife a few years ago. Um, some of those checks, <laughs> they don't amount to more than what the stamp on the envelope is, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice to have them. It's nice to see that four years of drama school has paid off a little bit. Um, I've done quite a few commercials, voiceovers for um, different whiskey brands and Tourism Ireland also. And I'm actually working on a project at the moment, which is due out next fall. But um, it's something that's kind of been kept under wraps right now. But uh, when it comes out next fall, you'll, people will see it and know about it. So I'm looking forward to that. You've got a, a, the kind of work that does allow you to take opportunities when they come along. So I, I hope yeah. there's more of them and let us know. I will indeed, uh, yeah, I will indeed. I've actually done quite a lot of them at the Irish Repertory Theatre down in Chelsea there. It's a wonderful little institution here in the city. Um, they're one of the few actual repertory theatres that are working year round. They give a lot of work to lots of actors, lots of theatre professionals. And um, they're a wonderful group to work with. They actually have a play running at the moment. Um, it might not be running when it goes to air, but uh, it's called The Pigeon of the Taj Mahal. And it's by one of our most important writers in Ireland at the moment called uh, Alicia Sexton. Um, I've worked quite a lot with Origin Theatre Company. Um, they produce a lot of European playwrights. They're behind the first Irish theatre festival every year. And they actually produce quite a lot of work at 59 East 59, which is in our, it's in our community board area. It's uh, down on 59th Street mm -hmm. and uh, between Madison and Park, I think it is. Wonderful space. And um, Origin, wonderful company. And uh, again, like you said, uh, having a career in the bar restaurant business allows me time to pursue my acting um, career also. We also have produced plays upstairs at the bar. We put on readings. We, I've got many friends involved in theatre who use the space for readings of new plays, all that sort of thing. So it's, it's, it's really nice that I'm able to marry two of my passions together like that. Without plugging a business, Ryan's Daughter is a popular place. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, and a, a lot of clubs use it for meetings. Yep. Um, so you've, you've built up a, a community. We were very proud of that. That's, like, that's a little mission that myself and my partner, James Girding, um, really takes seriously is, like we said, small businesses are the fabric of communities. Um, we love hosting different groups and associations. We have the Multiple Maloma um, Research Foundation have days with us for Marathon Sunday. 
We've got a pint of science, which is a, a group of people who come in and they give little talks about anything to do in the, in the world of science. We have the, uh, the Historical Society of the Upper East Side um, come into us quite a bit. And something I'm really proud about is we've just actually managed to raise $2,500 for the Good Shepherd Services, which are located down in Brooklyn. And uh, they provide um, what they've been trying to provide for the last few years, and this is the first year it's happened, is they provide a space for disadvantaged kids in the bed area of Brooklyn, a place to come and play indoor soccer mm -hmm. from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock every uh, Friday night, which is, an air, which is a, a bit of time that's really, really kind of... Um, it can be a dodgy time for young kids. Sure. They're just out of school, the weekend's beginning. So instead of being out in the streets with nothing to do, they get to play indoor soccer. They play soccer all year round, but from November to February, it's the weather doesn't really allow for it. So we're very proud to be associated with them, with the Bedford Stye Athletic Club. It's been a pleasure, pleasure. Uh, visiting with you. Thanks I very much. I have a feeling that uh, when the borough president's office sees this show, they might start appointing more <laughs> small business people to uh, well, community boards. Uh, but we, need, we also need the small business people to be uh, engaged and to actually, you know, go out and, and seek out their community boards. I think that's a really well, important first step as well. Well, maybe that's our job to reach out to them. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Sir, thanks thank very you. much, David. Congratulations on the citizenship. Thank you very much, a pleasure, thanks. Next guest, Lynn Strong Shinosaki, welcome. Thank you, thank you, happy to be here. Thank you. So Lynn's love for community service began when she was a young Girl Scout growing up outside Philadelphia. And her love for Old Devil Island started after she enrolled in Parsons School of Design, where she interned for a design company off 59th Street. She said she'd walk down the block and take the tram, and she still thinks to this day that it's spectacular. She currently resides in Roosevelt Island, and after college, she promised herself that if she ever ended up in New York City, she'd live in Roosevelt Island. Years later, she kept that promise to herself. Welcome again, Lynn. Thank you, thank you. How are I, you? <laughs> I consider myself so fortunate because Roosevelt Island is this little gem in the middle of the East River that I bet some of the people who are watching this may not have ever gone to. There's a spectacular tram ride over. There's some beautiful vistas. There's a meditation steps where you can watch the sunset. It's, it's almost like a, a watching a view of something. It's just such a wonderful gem in the East River and I've enjoyed living there. I originally moved there thinking, I wanna live one place for three years, 25 years later. <laughs> I've been trying to make Roosevelt Island the best neighborhood in New York City and that's my goal. <laughs> Is this why you ended up at the community board? It is, it is. I wanted to have an impact on the decisions that are over Roosevelt Island and the community board is one of those places where you can have an impact. So far, what have you been your impressions as a community board member? It took a little bit getting used to because there's 50 members of the community board and it's kind of learning about where they live, what their interests are, how my interests are in align with who. And, and I, I actually did some um, housing advocacy a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I saw some of my housing advocates as part of the community board, so that made nice. it feel a little more homey for me. <laughs> That's always nice. What other committees within the board have you joined? So obviously I'm on the Roosevelt Island Committee, mm -hmm. and I'm getting my feet wet. I've been visiting some of the other um, committees and there's a couple that I'm interested in, but I haven't made that final decision or, or commitment to the committees. Sure. I've just been kind of going to different ones to see what it's like. That's a good way, I think, to decide where um, you're most fit in, in the community board. Besides your love for Roosevelt Island, which three years turned into 25, <laughs> <laughs> what other desires do you have and wish to serve as part of the community board? Well, I know one of the big issues right now with the community board is getting back the what was privatized, what has become privatized sure. space under the 59th Street Bridge. There's so very few places that are community, particularly in Manhattan, that I really think that that's something that's worth working on so that more people from the community can engage in community spaces. And so that's one of the things that's caught my eye in stepping into this 
vista of the community board? As someone who lives on the island, uh, there's been many projects that have sort of sprouted in the last couple of years on Roosevelt Island. And how does the community feel about these new endeavors and you as an advocate and as a representative of Roosevelt Island at Community Board 8, how do you feel that you can translate these concerns uh, to the board? Two of those projects um, just recently completed was Four Freedoms Park. Mm -hmm. I, I loved that the Roosevelt Island was built with the intention of using some of Roosevelt's ideas and beliefs. It's an extremely mixed community, and to be able to honor him with that beautiful uh, monument, I think, and, and the views there are spectacular. I think it's going to be interesting to see how the community and how Cornell um, meshes in with the community. Yeah. Um, we are being a part of some of the changes that are going on with uh, the building, the buildings are beautiful. The campus looks like it's going to be gorgeous. But what's not clear is how and will they interface with the community and what the impact of having a university on such a small island, how it will impact the community. Absolutely. What other specific goals do you see yourself having um, as a member of the community board this coming year? Really learning more about how different aspects of New York work. I mean, just listening to the Transportation Committee talk about the Second Avenue subway and some of the issues that went on with that and um, trying to figure out where I, where I sit as far as some of the bike lanes and where they should be and where they shouldn't be. And I think one of the things that I would love to see is when the community board goes to street fairs, for us to interact more, ask questions, maybe even interview people in the community. How do you feel about this particular idea that the community board is being faced with? How, as a community member, do you live on the Upper East Side? How do you feel about this? And have us really engage more in the community and find out and get feedback from the community members. I think that could be really interesting for us. Absolutely. So it looks like you're very vested in your community. Uh, what values do you think have come into play that you will either assert as a community member or that you bring into a community board? Well. I, I like to liken myself to the Bella Abzug School of uh, New York politics. To be straight up, to be honest, to tell people what you think you are, are good things about the environment, the community, the situation, and then to be upfront about what aren't the good things or what, what the downside may be to any conflict. And, and really being open to listen to what ideas are there, but then to sure. be really able to express my own. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today, Lynn. Thank you for having Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Really appreciate it. This has been Getting to Know Your Community Board. Thanks again for joining us tonight. And keep an eye out for more meet and greets of your community board members. If you're interested in serving the community, we'd love to have you at our public meetings, which are always available on our website, cbam.com.